Hello everyone, welcome back to Code with Beto. In this video, we are going to learn how to use a form sheet to present forms or information in a bottom sheet style. Let's see the demo so that you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to press the plus button. And as you can see, we have this bottom sheet, but this is actually not a bottom sheet. It's, it's known as form sheet, which means if I focus on the text input and enable my keyword, this will uh, expand to the maximum size. So if I click on top of this, this will shrink down and we also have these really nice animations. So at this point, I have this configured only for 50% of the screen um, and I'm not able to drag at the top, but we can actually enable that if we want to. Now, if I tap outside, the sheet will be closed. And yeah, so if I click on the input here, now we are we, we should be able to start writing in here. And the cool thing about this is that if we are using inputs inside this form, um, we are preventing the keyboard from covering these inputs. So if I press here, now we can see the back and also I can change to dark mode and we can maybe see the behind the sheet before we push this information. Um, and yeah, so we're going to learn how to use this uh, form sheet. It's actually very easy using React Navigation Stack. We're going to be using the only chats application. And if you want to learn how to build this app, you can just go to codewithbeto.dev and check out the React Native course because this application is the final project. Um, so we're going to be using this one. Previously, uh, we only had a modal in here, which means this was open fully here. Uh, but I, w I think, you know, this is better for forms and also lets the user know, okay, if you press this button, you need to create a new post, but they can just swipe down to dismiss if they don't want to, uh, instead of just opening this to the maximum height of the screen. So yeah, if you want to learn how to create this app, go to codebeta.dev, check out the course. As well, if you want to get the code for this project, you can just go to the project section and you'll find all the projects that we do in this YouTube channel available to you for free just go to codebeta.dev slash projects. Once you find a project that you are interested in, you can just click on it and then scroll down uh, and you'll find these links for GitHub or download as zip. Alrighty guys, now one of the requirements in order to integrate this form sheet as we are seeing here in the demo, it's going to be that you have a React Native version seven, okay? Now, if you don't know, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to show you how you can check the version of React Navigation that you're using in your application. But if you don't know, you can um, just go and check out this video. Actually, in this video, we are learning about the new features of React Navigation and you are going to learn a lot. But as well, if uh, we are going to see here in this video how to install the latest version. Now, it might happen that at a time that you are watching this video, the React Native um, Navigation 7, it's already released. Currently, it's uh, on the version release candidate. So it's not published yet. So that's why we need to use this at next when installing this um, native stack, basically, because we're going to be using the native stack to present this screen. So just keep that in mind. Um, you need to use it at next. Now, uh, I would encourage you to check this video to see how to install um, how, how this, you know, this command will work. Um, otherwise, if you already have React Navigation 7, you should be good to go. Um, and yeah, so let's start with this video. All right, so the first thing that I'll do, guys, it's actually just show you that this is my application. I'll reload here. And I already have, you know, this is the only chats project that we built in the course. So you may notice that we have some things, but this is the home stack. Um, by the way, you need to be a little bit familiar with navigation in order to understand this, but the home stack um, will contain some screens that will be accessible in the home tab here in the app, right? And one of these screens, it's the new post screen, okay? And normally when we are accessing this kind of um, screens, I like to use the modal because it looks really nice on iOS. Um, and if I press the plus, this is the current default, um, you know, this is the current default model that we're seeing on iOS. Okay. Um, and this is how it looks, but 
um, just, just keep in mind that you, you need to have a stacked screen. And one more thing is that you need to be using native stack. Uh, so if I search for native, um, yeah, so I'm using this React Navigation native stack. Now, the, the second thing that you need to check is that you are using, uh, so if I go to my package JSON, you need to check that you are using native stack version seven at least, okay? So as I was mentioning before, this is a release candidate for, so it's highly, um, you know, it, it could be that at the time that you're watching this video, a couple of days from now, this is going to be the default latest version of React Navigation. Just make sure that you're using the latest one. Okay, so once you make sure that you're using React Navigation version seven, we can go ahead and close this and go back to um, our screen. Okay, so I'll close the Explorer for now. If you, again, guys, if you want to learn more about this project um, and how we build it step-by-step, step, we actually do that in the React Native course at codepeta.dev. We also have more courses for Next.js projects. Um, so for front-end, we're using Next.js as well as Git and GitHub. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is actually change the presentation of this screen. This is going to be very easy, actually, to be form sheet. Now, if I hit save and go back to the plus icon here, you notice that nothing has changed yet. And this is because when we're using the form sheet, the custom, I mean, the default behavior is going to be to use the full height and it's going to look very similar to the modal, okay? So what we can do here is actually just type sheet and this will bring all the things that we can customize when we are dealing with the form sheet. Now, as you can see here, we have allow the tents and we have a really nice description. So in this case, allow the tents describes heights where a sheet can rest. At this point, you know, we, we only have one, which is 100% and works only when presentation is set to form sheet. So keep that in mind defaults to large. So let's go ahead and modify this one. And if I open uh, double quotes here, you'll notice that we have these options, large, medium. So let's go ahead and select all because I want to allow the user to move um, in all details. And I'll show you how, how this works. Basically, when I show you the demo, this was medium only. But if I come back here and press plus, just like that, with this simple line of code, we are able to have this really nice uh, new screen and we can drag and drop and scroll down to close. Um, and yeah, I mean, this works really nice. And if we have it in 50% and press the input, because this is a form sheet, it will, um, you know, go up to take 100% of the space. Okay. Now, also notice, guys, that the background, it's been dimmed a little bit. And if I change to dark, it's also dimmed a little bit, which means if I type outside, the form sheet will be closed, which is really cool. Okay. Cool. Now we can actually customize this form sheet a lot more. For example, we can say sheets and let's see what else we have. We also have corner radius, so we can change this. I'll use 30 for now. And if I hit save, you can see that we have now this really nice radius on the sheet and you can increase this. So up to a 50 per 50, let's say 50 or even a hundred, but this will break, you know, my header at this point. Okay. Just to, just to show you guys, this is how you can customize this. I've seen some really nice round, um, sheets that have a, you know, like a high corner radius and looks really nice. So at this point, I'll just use 30, um, because I'm using this publish button that comes inside the header of this screen. Uh, so I don't want to cut the button. So I'll just use 30 for now. All right. Now we also have, uh, I wanted to mention guys here, we can set this to medium, which is the one that I had when I was showing you the demo. And if I you know, open this now, we prevent the user from sweep, swipe up unless they press the input. This will be the default uh, behavior. But yeah, I think all, you know, gives more freedom to the user. So let's keep all. Uh, then we also have these, um, so if I set sheet, we also have this largest undimmed detent. Okay. 
So largest undimmed detent. Let's let's read the explanation here. This is going to be for um for which a view underneath, o sea, I mean underneath the sheet won't be dimmed. Works only when presentation is set to form sheet. Okay. So if I say here all and hit save and open the post again. Now you can see that we have the undimmed. So let's change this to be, uh, let's say medium. Now on medium, the tint, you, you notice that the background is not darker anymore. And if I press outside, nothing will happen. Okay. And this is actually useful when you want to show, you know, some, maybe some tools about the content that you are seeing here. And when you want to sh present these tools or these settings, you can open this with an undimmed detent and you should be able to interact with the background screen and still have this, um, this really nice screen. And if you scroll up, you will have, you know, all the things you need and maybe you can play around with the tools. And once you are done, uh, you can just swipe down to close. So this is really cool. I will leave this uh, at all just so that we have the dimmed right now, because I think it's appropriate for what we're trying to do. We want to dim the background and because, you know, this is going to be like a new input and that, that this also lets the user know that if they press outside, um, they are going to close the sheet. All right. So this is a really nice one. Let's move on to the next one, which is one of my favorite ones. This is going to be the grabber visible right now by default, this is false. So I'll set this to true. And if I hit save and go to the plus, now we have this really nice um, grabber thing and we can, you know, drag up and down and actually it will animate. And when you press it, it will move between the detents that we define in here. So if I only, uh, only have the large, for example, hit save. When I press this, it will go Okay, it will close because we only have one. But uh, if we, let's say that we use uh, just medium, let's see what happens in this case. I think it will close because we only have two. Yeah, but I think this will work only for all. So we need to have the all the tens. Now at the moment we only have 50 and, and 100. So we can just play between 50 and 100 right now. Okay, and this is how it looks. So I really like this one. Now I think I would use this one without showing a header for this one. So you can hide the header by saying header shown equal to false and hit save. I think this would look better, but right now all my logic to publishing the post is inside the header. So I'll just go ahead and leave the header there for now. Okay, so this is a really cool one. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, we also have a sheet expands when scroll to edge, okay? Now, by default, I believe this one is going to be true. Yeah, it's true. And this one determines whether the sheet should expand to large detent when scrolling. Okay, works only when presentation is set to form sheet. So let's use this one and I'll say true. Let me change this to false. So I believe, as you can see here, so if I scroll up, nothing, I mean, the sheet won't expand. But if I set this to true, and hit save and scroll up on the sheet, you can see that um, it expands, right? So you can also customize that. I think, you know, scrolling up in this case, it's nice. So I'll leave this to true, but you can also set it to false. And if you have a scroll view in here, like I do right now, the user can actually scroll between these items and we can prevent expanding the sheet. Now, in this case, I really want this to be true because I want to expand if the user swipes up. Okay, cool. That's the other one. Then uh, let's type shit again. And at this point, we have used all the shit um, properties that we can use with the form sheet. And this is basically all we can do at the moment. With the shit, of course, you can expand this with other properties like the header title and and you know, animations and things like that. So yeah, guys, basically this is what I wanted to show. This is really nice. We didn't have to install any third party dependency, just using React Navigation native. Uh, now, keep in mind that this will come with some limitations. 
And to show you some of the limitations, I will bring here the Android device. Um, and for the Android device, because the form sheet is using under the hood native code for iOS, this won't work in Android, which means it's going to default to the presentation of a simple modal screen. So if I press the plus, we will have the same functionality that we had before when it was a modal. Okay. But I would say, you know, we have some um, really cool functionality for iOS devices and we didn't have to do much. Just come here and tweak the presentation. Um, but just keep in mind that this, this, you know, this screen won't work for Android. Now, by the way, this reminds me, if you want to check out as well the project uh, in which we create this bottom sheet, uh, blur bottom sheet actually with React Navigation as well, um, and this one will work for Android and iOS. So if you are curious about how you can do, how you can integrate a bottom sheet as well with some limitations, but I would say it would be good for you to check out this video. Um, you can learn as well how to do the bottom sheet for Android, not only for iOS, but for iOS, I'm super happy right now with this functionality. And this is how you can do it guys. Now, of course, this is going to be, um, compatible with dark light mode and we have all the gestures working really nicely on iOS. Okay. So I guess that's it for me in this video, guys. I hope you like it. I hope you learned something new. Remember that you can go to codewithbeta.dev, check out the projects to get the source code dependencies that we're using and all that. And if you want to become a master in React Native, you can check out the courses here. We also have a course for React with TypeScript um, and also Master Git and GitHub. With that, thanks for watching. Leave me a comment. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.